Hey guys, just want to check in with you um, after the first 90 days. I want to see how you're getting on. Um, we started a program based around 1st of January, and as you'll be watching this, you're probably going up to about the end of March, so first 90 days of the Money Pan program. And uh, how's it working out for you? Uh, you're, you're on track with your goals, you're doing what you want to do, or are you sort of making catch up? And maybe you've just joined this program a bit later to the game, so it's just going through the first 90 days yourself. So whatever, wherever you are on the destiny of the program, um, we're just gonna sort of check in with you and see how you're doing. So uh, my first nine days have done well. I'm way here on holiday in Barbados, enjoying some sunshine. And um, I just wanna take some time out to spend a few more minutes just to go through it with you and to share with you where I am and where you should be on the plan. Okay, so first thing is, is be kind to yourself. If you're not fulfilling what you set out to do at the beginning of the 90 days, be kind to yourself, you're a human being. You didn't live to walk in a day. Um, it took you a good few months to do that. And it's probably going to take a good few months to change your um, habits. And remember, it's our habits that make us and our habits that break us. So we all have good habits, and that's what I have is today, to so instill good habits. And part of the 90 days check-in process is for you to um, build or sustain those good habits. So first 90 days, what you should have done. Step one, money plan, compelling vision, know your outcome. You've got to make sure you put your outcome in there, your competitive vision, what it is you want to achieve, what your future vision looks like, where you're living, who you're living with, what kind of work you're doing, that kind of thing. That Read that every day, twice a day, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Really ingrain it in the context, uh, contour, uh, text of your brain so it's compelling and exciting. The second thing you make sure you do is your vision. What's important to you in life? What's important to you about money? What's important to you about relationships if you're looking to develop your relationships? Also, the what's important to you question is a fantastic question. You keep asking it over and over again, we'll drink deeper and deeper and deeper into your value sets. And when you're living in harmony with your values, you're going to be on the road to success. Okay? It'll make you feel happy. You're in the flow. Uh, next thing is looking at your goals. So your goals, so 10-year goals, like a vision, and bringing it back five years, three years, and one year goal. And remember, New Year's resolutions, we set them on January 1st, we don't look at them again probably until January 1st the following year, and they get forgotten. So what we then do is we have a 90-day check-in, so this is our first 90-day check-in for 2018. So 90 check where are you gonna be uh, after 90 days when you're moving towards your one year goal? So you could set a 12 month goal here, but what I typically do is set like anniversary goals. So we say, okay, 1st of January 2019, where do I wanna be? Great, this is what I want to achieve financially, emotionally, spiritually, uh, relationships, health, uh, in business. Just one or two goals in each area will be absolutely fine. Don't overdo it. The less goals we have to focus on, the more likely I would to achieve them. And then what we do is we look at, okay, so where do, what do I need to do in the next 90 days to move closer towards us? We're breaking our 12-month goal down into chunks. We move towards it. And then we go one step further. We then said, right, what daily actions, what rituals are we going to take on? Habits that make us, habits that break us, what daily routines are we going to do? So every morning, wake up, you're probably going to try and meditate, you're going to try and do some journaling, sit down your three to five actions you're going to do for a day, you're going to review the actions from the previous day, what went well, what didn't go so well, what you pleased about, uh, and then what are you grateful for? Three, three things you're grateful for in your life, and then do a bit of journaling. You'll find all these things in my download resources section uh, on warranty.com. So go across there, download the compelling vision worksheet. That will take everything from the compelling vision, the five, uh, 10, five, three, one year goal, the 90 day check-ins, and talk to you about your um, uh, daily actions as well, what you need to do. And again, it's all covered in my new book, The Money Plan, which fingers crossed will be out sometime in April um, 2018. Let me just type my birthday, It'd be a nice present, wouldn't it? So once we've done the, the psychology, okay, so we know where we go, what we want to achieve, what's important to us in life, we then need to work on things like our numbers. We need to know what our numbers are. So what's coming in? What money comes into the house? Earning, salary, any interest you might get, any benefits you might receive, any loan payments that you're getting from people, any grants, what's coming in? What's going out? So we need to go through all our expenditure. This is what we should have done our first night today. If we haven't done it, we can do it now. It's never too late. So let's look at what's coming out. Direct debit payments go to our bank statement. Do I need this in my life? Do I want this payment in my life? Can I get the same experience cheaper? And where you're gonna make some quick wins on this is most likely around utilities, um, TV packages, around that sort of area. 
Because let's face it, if your outcome is to reduce your expenses sir, so that we have at least 12.5% of our gross income, so one hour per day left over, we might have to make some cutbacks, we might have to make some sacrifices. And what will happen is as our income increases, we'll talk in future issues, we'll talk about ways of improving or increasing our income, you'll have more circles on the phone. And then you can then decide whether you reintroduce these things into your expenditure as well. So um, each item, go through one line by line. Do I want this in my life? Do I need this in my life? And can I, if I do, then can I get the same experience cheaper? Uh, and quick wins, most likely to be on things like uh, mortgage interest rates, might be a good idea to start fixing rates now, looking at potential increases in interest rates. You can look at utility rates. There's some great um, offers out there. I switched mine in January. Um, save myself quite a bit on my use, on my electricity bill and just shop around mobile phone contract go through each individual item and there might be lots of items there you can't do all of them at once so let's let's plan it it's a plan so let's maybe pick two or three to do in the first month two or three in the second month two or three in the third month and then let it roll over you don't have to get everything done in the 90 days what you do need to do is you need to, be able to take action and move towards reducing your expenses and getting organized so what comes in what goes out what we own the third item we look at what do we own so do we have property what's the value of our property we don't have to get a valuation every 90 days but let's just get a valuation of it let's have a look online some of the online portals um see what the valuation is look, um or maybe get the state agent around to do a valuation for you the other thing you can do is look at your other assets what's in your bank where is your money in the bank so what's the account number what's the sort code what's the contact details of the bank let's get organized with this um look at your pension funds so how many pension funds have you got um, let's make sure we get valuations on those. And it's not a bad idea to look at these valuations periodically. So every 90 days wouldn't be a bad idea to make sure we know how much money we have. Any ISAs, national savings, premium bonds. Does anybody owe you any money? Any loans outstanding? Okay, so let's go through the whole shebang, make sure we get organized for that. And then what we owe. So what we owe other people. So income expenditure, assets we own, asset uh, things we owe, so liabilities. Let's get balances on credit cards, overdrafts, loans, mortgages. Let's bring this up to date and go one step further and find out what the interest rate is we're paying on those items. And can we improve the rate of interest? So can we reduce the cost of our borrowing so that we're saving money without doing anything? And again, there's lots of great comparison sites out there you can look at. But by doing this, you're just getting yourself organized. So you're just going through that sort of system. And the third thing we look at, fourth thing, the next thing we look at is your bank account system. So we want to make sure that the bank account system is in place. So we've got our WAM sorted out, we've got our bills account, I did a whole video on this. I don't want to go too much detail about this, but at this stage, you should have your bank account system sorted out. So your money is going into one account. So all your income goes into one account. All of your regular committed expenditure goes out of that same account. We call that the bills account. One payment out of that account every week on a Wednesday goes into your WAM account your personal spend account, you get paid weekly on a Wednesday, and that is the only variable money that you need to spend. So have the WAM account paid into your personal account, another account, I use Monzo for my personal account, I like the way the card works, um, I rarely use credit card payments, um, and I spend on that, and that's my weekly WAM, and once that's gone, it's gone, I wait for the next week, and I get payments on over on a Wednesday, and I repeat the process, and that happens to me 52 weeks of the year, for myself and my wife, and it works brilliantly. Um, the other account that you'll have is your emergency reserve, and I need you to start working on that emergency reserve to bring up to one thousand pounds. If you have debt, we keep that's unsecured debt. If you don't have any other secure debt, then we're working on a balance between three and twelve months of your expenditure, depending on how your income falls, whether you've got a good sturdy regular income or whether you're very volatile. And if you have nothing saved in reserves at the moment, let's start a thousand of debt. You have to start three months and then just start working on it over time. Um, and then the next thing we need to look at, make sure we've checked in on the 90 days, sorry if you're flying past, is the children's pocket money. Let's make sure your children's pocket money is automated and organized. Make sure your children are buying in on the system, they know what's going on. So you buy their needs, they buy their wants. Make sure you're spending the uh, pocket money linked to activities, they're doing some activities, they're doing some chores, they're helping out around the house whether you link it to study, revision, homework, and activity at the home or all, it's a family decision. My own home, we have chores that our children do around the house. I want to make sure that they realize that when they bring money in, they earn that money, and it's not just given to them, um, and that they have to get a reward when they do effort. 
um, we link our box money to their age, two pounds for every year of their age per month, and I guess automated payment from my bills account, and they receive it onto a card called an OSPA card. That's a special prepaid card set up for children, um, because I believe that credit cards are, or automated spending is the way of the future. Pretty much never spend cash these days, or very rarely. And therefore, I want to train my children to be able to spend money intelligently, using plastic. I don't want to avoid using plastic and say they have to use cash and then they all of a sudden have to start using plastic in the future. They don't have the skills to do so. So automated payment, two pounds for every year of their age, you get paid onto their credit card, or their prepaid card, then we use Oscar. I'll put some links into the show notes so you've got that as well. Uh, let me just check where we are. I think pretty much that is everything that I have down the first 90 days, where you should be. So everything from knowing your outcome, what's your vision, your values, your goals, nice day check-in, um, your income expenditure, assets and liabilities, sort your bank account system out, um, cut your expenses, that's one thing I've missed out. Cut your expenses as much as you can, make sure you just ask yourself you know, if you uh, need this, want it, can you get the same for energy for anywhere else. Um, sort your WAM out, make sure your WAM's there. Also, how can you maximize your income? Are there other things you can do to maximize your income, bring more money in? But start in the other areas first, and once you've done that, Great. So you've got 90 days to do this, okay? So three months. That's quite a long time. So if you've done it in the first 90 days, I'm going to cover things you'd be focusing on for the next 90 days. But if you haven't, you've got 90 days to focus on this. That's three months. It's quite a bit of time. So start with number one. Go to warranty.com, download the compelling vision worksheet, write down how your future looks like, write down your goals, write down your values. Let's start getting some 90 day actions in place. And these are great place to start. These things that I've just gone through, these 90 days. Nine day actions to cover, and then daily rituals. Wake up downstairs. Let's do it. What actions? Three to five things you can do today to move towards your night day check in. Uh, review yesterday's. Had you on yesterday? It was good, bad. What can you do better today? What are you grateful for? Bit of journaling. Move yourself towards so you make sure you're making progress. Okay, so all those that did start on January 1st and have done the nine days and you're on target, congratulations. Give you a big pat on the back. Arms out, round. Well done, you did a good job. Um, now we need to look and say, okay, what are we going to move towards over the next month days? How are we going to build on what our successes and build momentum of taking ourselves forward to achieve even more? Because we're just nine days into a lifelong program. So, what's the next thing to do? Focus on your emergency reserves. So, you should now have all your bank everything done. Next step is focus on your emergency reserves. You should have a thousand pounds done, tick last month. Now, I need you to build on that to get between three and 12 months of your expenditure. Now, three and 12 months of your expenditure is quite a large variance. And the reason it's large is because it appeals to different people. People at the beginning end, the start end of three months, are going to be more people who have got a guaranteed income coming in. So it's either a good professional salary, maybe a senior position, or maybe someone who's been employed for some period of time in their job and feel, actually, I'm quite sturdy here. Three months is quite fine. They probably have no dependent children, maybe their partner or their single if they're in a relationship, their partner's working. So they've got good safe debt and they've got some assets around. Now, as you go through the spectrum to six months, that might be when you've got some children or you just feel that you need some more money coming in to make yourself feel a bit more secure. And then at the far end of the scale, the 12 months, that's typically when you've got um, other people relying on your income. Maybe you're the sole income source uh, earner. And in addition, that your income might be a lot more volatile. So you may be on commission only, or you're self-employed, and your income's with more ups and downs. Or you just feel that you need 12 months to make you feel secure, comfortable, whatever it might be. The outcome of the three to 12 months is giving you the choice to decide how much you want to hold on deposit so you sleep well at night. And it's there to cover eventualities that are emergencies. Um, so three months minimum. You don't really need more 12 months of your expenditure held on deposit, which is fairly instant access. Tie up in a high interest deposit account. I personally use premium bonds for my money, but there's lots of people who would say they don't offer a great return. I agree. But they're safe. They're backed by the government. That money is not an investment for me. It's a security blanket. I'd rather it be secure with the government. Someone nice and pretty instantly accessible with premium bonds. Okay, so that's the emergency reserve. Second thing is we go through the house of wealth. Now, I've covered this in previous episodes. I want you to make sure you go through all the different insurances and the house of wealth. There's only a few things that are essential. The emergency reserve, which we've covered in the first one. Um, will, make sure you sort your will out, okay? Go to warranty.com if you don't already have one, and you can get information on there. Send me an email. Um, power of attorneys, lasting power of attorneys. Get both health and welfare 
and property affairs and make sure we register those with the Office of Public Guardian. And then we go through optional ones, looking at life insurance, income protection, um, disability insurance, medical insurance, your home and contents insurance, just making sure all your foundations are considered. I'm not saying you have to take all these insurances out. I did a presentation recently in, in Bristol and a lady came up to me and was horrified that I was suggesting that everyone took all these insurances out. And that wasn't my message. My message was you need an emergency reserve. You need a will. You need a power of attorney. You need to consider life insurance, critical illness, income protection, disability insurance, uh, medical insurance, contents insurance. You need to consider those items. You don't necessarily need all those items. Um, and that's the, the basic foundation level um, in the house of wealth. And then I want you to know your numbers. So when we start investing, um, and I'll come on to that in a second, I want you to know um, what your target numbers are. We break the house of wealth into uh, security, independence, and freedom. The security level is having all your basics bases covered, having fully funded emergency reserve, having your bank account system sorted out. That's your security level. Your independence is when you can cover your basic household outgoings by passive investment income. So you never have to work again, you've got an income coming in. So let's say, for example, uh, your basic outgoings are a thousand pounds a month. Um, you need about 300,000 pounds of money invested um, to cover that level of income. And then likewise with um, uh, independence, independence is replacing the lifestyle that you desire or deserve or wish for, or maybe your current lifestyle is sufficient. Um, and therefore the independence level is having sufficient passive income to cover that level. Okay. So we're not actually working towards those things that what we are working towards. We're not taking actions to achieve those things just yet. What we're doing is just having an awareness of where we're heading. Okay. Uh, the next thing we need to calculate in the next nine days is our minimum snowball. So our minimum snowball is 12.5% of your gross income. And that comes from me saying you pay yourself the first working hour of every day. But let's make the assumption you do an eight hour day. I want you to take one twelve, which is eight, uh, twelve and a half percent, and I want you to one eight, sorry, which is twelve and a half percent, and I want you to save that money. Okay, but these are actions that you do once your emergency reserve is fully funded and you've covered the foundation. So we're now moving on a little bit from the very basics. So you need to calculate your numbers, make sure you know where you are, and then you go and take the next step, and then you say, okay, I've got um, twelve and a half percent is a minimum. This is a minimum, by the way. This is the target, this is the minimum. Um, and then we're gonna start putting that away for investments in the next line say. So at this stage, I just want you to consider and work out what that is. I want you to make take time to focus on reducing your debt. So get unsecured debt, credit cards, loans, student loans. You can see if you can reduce the interest rates on those items, which we've done that in the previous step, but we can make sure we can do that. And I want you to start chipping away and paying the smallest balance first. This is covered in the snowball. We've got that on video as well, so you can cover that. Um, but we focus on paying the smallest debt first, not the lowest interest rate, which is interesting. And the reason behind that is psychology. I want you to get wins. I want you to pay the smallest debt off. I want you to then take your minimum payment and the overpayment, the 12 percent and pay it onto the next smallest debt. So you're building momentum. So at this stage, our snowball is just calculating it and then focusing on paying towards our debts. So we've got that way. Um, and then, as always, let's look at your um, expenditure. Is there any ways we can reduce our expenditure? My outcome isn't for you to stop enjoying life, but my outcome is for you to make sure that you are only paying for things you absolutely need. Spending creep, creeps in very, very quickly in life. Things are also into these days, and you can quite easily stop things or change things without effect, uh, affecting the standard of your living, okay, or your lifestyle. So do that, and then look at your income. Let's start thinking of creative ways how we can increase our income. So can we sell additional things? Can we set a part-time job up? Can we look at pay rises at work? How, what can we do? Can we maybe look for promotions? Or can we look at different career paths? But this is things I need to start looking at. So ways we can start increasing our income. So I cover this in quite a bit of detail in my book, uh, The Money Plan. So you know, when it's out, pick that up. And if you want any more information, you want me to cover anything else in more detail, then just give me a shout. Send me a message. I'm very happy to do it. It's always great to get some feedback. I thought as we were coming to the end of the, the first nine days of 2018, it would be a great opportunity to recap on, hey, this is what I wanted you to try and cover in the first nine days, and this is what I want you to cover in the next nine days that are coming up. Now, if you come to the, the program partway through the year, no problem at all. Don't rush, don't try and play catch up, just start where you are. That's all you can do. Okay.
okay so don't try and squash it all in into a month you'll overwhelm yourself and you'll think this is a crazy plan just start where you are today and say okay for the next five days this is what i'm going to do or maybe give yourself slightly longer and coincide it with the 60-day check-in mark uh which will come in due time so um yeah give me feedback send me messages on facebook drop me an email Go and check out warranty.com, sign up. We'll send regular updates out at the end of every month as well. We send a, an email summary of the articles and things that have gone on that month. And um, give me a feedback. Let me know what you're saying. This has been Warren Shoot, uh, a run financial education for patients. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And um, be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.